making our way through John. Yeah. And I just want to say before I start, I think we have like 12 verses left in this chapter. And is that too loud? A little bit. Okay. I think we have like 12 verses left in this chapter. And I, and I really kind of thought, before I started, I thought, well, we'll get through the chapter pretty easy tonight. Tony, that light's shining over there. <coughs> over where? You guys really don't want me to stay, do you? Is that? There. That's better. Yeah? Is everybody Depends on where you're sitting. No. Is it okay for you, Joyce? Is it okay for you, Joyce? Yeah. That's fine. That's All right. I'm going to tell you where to go sit. All you. right. <laughs> Come over here. Okay. I feel the love of Christ. <laughs> I'll go home. Well, obviously, you guys, you guys haven't been listening to my messages very well. That's what I gotta say. We'll all get, we'll all get mad at each other and start throwing rocks. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna throw the rest of the way. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. But I thought we could get done with this chapter tonight. But uh, typical me, I got to two verses tonight, and that's gonna lead us all over the place. And, and I don't know what you guys think, but I just can't, I'm not the type of teacher that can pe teach, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this, but it's just not my style. I cannot teach out of one book of the Bible and come across verses that I know are referenced in other places of the Bible and not, and not go there. Right. I, I have a really hard time, I've never in my life, I don't think, ever taught one book of the Bible and stayed in that book exclusively what we like. Um, and, and so, you know, it's going to take us longer. That's why it does. I mean, a lot of times, you know, you, you guys know, we'll go four or five verses in John and we're 30 verses other places. So that's what's going to be kind of tonight. There's a couple verses that I really want to, I just couldn't blow by them. And, and some of it, I know was going to be review, but as a pastor and as a Bible study teacher, if you don't do your due diligence, and you just assume that everybody knows, you know what happens? They generally do. Right. And, and you know, I don't know about you all, but there's things I hear this review that I need to hear again. So for some of you, this is gonna be review, so it's pretty simple stuff. But for others, I just wanna just refresh our memories when we get to these verses. So we're gonna be going in different places tonight. I'm actually going to start in verse 21 um, in John chapter 20. And if you recall, I'm going to pick it up where after Jesus appears to his disciples after the resurrection. Okay? okay. After the whole thing that we talked about where he's seen Mary, he went and was in the presence with the Father for the day, and then he come back and now he's with the disciples. So I'll start in verse 21. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Why is that significant? Do you guys remember a couple weeks ago what, what we talked about where he said, He says, Peace be with you? Do you remember the promise that Jesus gave his disciples when he was with them and eating at the Last Supper? He promised two things. He promised peace. Well, actually, three things. He said, I'll be gone for a little while, then I'll be back. Right. And they were confused on that. They didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. And we looked at it. No, that's not the ascension and the second coming. That's, that's when he was in the tomb for the three days. And then on the first day of the resurrection, in the morning, we spent a lot of time looking at this last week. He was in the presence of the Father, and he's going to come back. He went and told Mary to let her know. Let him know, I'm here, and I'm going to come see him. And he says, at the Last Supper, he says... <laughs> I'm going to leave you with peace, I'm going to see you again, and I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You guys recall that? Yes. Yep. So this is what he's telling him right here. And he told him this at the Last Supper. Why? Because he says, I'm telling you this right now while I am with you in person, face to face. So when it does happen, what did he say? You will believe. Mm. You will believe. And everything that Jesus told him, is now coming to pass. So he says, peace be with you. 
Now here's one thing that's easy to kind of skip over if you don't think about it. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. This is the beginning of Jesus telling them they're going to have missionary things that they need to do. They're going to be doing what? When we go through the, when you go further into the book of Acts and the different places, what do these disciples start doing? Building the church. Amen. That's what he's saying. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. The work that I have done, I'm going to be leaving, but now I send you to do that work. Okay? I want you guys to remember that because that's going to be important a little bit. Okay? We'll go to the next verse, verse 22. And he says this. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Mm. That was the other promise. Mm -hmm. What happened right here when he said this? Amen. Mm. Amen. You know how many people, and this is what I want to go through. How many people think at Pentecost, that's when they were saved? I'm here to tell you that's not biblically correct. That makes no sense whatsoever. These disciples are saved right there. They're born again. They receive the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at verses here in a little bit. And then he says, Go to Jerusalem and wait for the gift I have promised you that the Father will send. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's what happened at Pentecost. It makes no sense that they had to get born again again. They get born again right here. Right. But I want to look at all that. And why is it so important that we're born again? I mean, see, see, these are some of the questions we got to ask. Everybody's like, well, yeah, I know you got to be born again. Why? Why do you got to be born again? Because you have to have a new heart. Okay. Good answer. Part of God's plan. Okay. But let's look at what it tells us in Scripture. Look, look what born again Jesus tells us mm -hmm. about you must be born again. Look what it says in John chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. See, we have covered this, but it's been nine months ago probably, so we, we kind of forget. <laughs> now, and this is, I know this is a familiar story, but I want to tie this all together. Now, there was a man, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you're going or you are doing in God if God were not with them. I want to stop there for a minute. Isn't this the same Nicodemus that come and got him in the tomb? And we find out later he becomes what? A believer in Christ. See? A lot of people are like, well, did Nicodemus get saved? Yeah. Yeah, he got born again. Yeah, he got born again. Okay. Yeah. Verse 3, 3. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Is there any option there? No. What does Jesus say? If you're not born again, what's, what's the alternative? You're not going to see the kingdom of God. You're not going to be with him for eternity. You're going to be in the lake of fire eventually. You must be born again, right? Look at the next verse. Here's what Nicodemus asks him. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Okay, now wait a minute. We, we kind of make fun of that. Right. you got to understand, this is so new. Right. You understand what he said in the verse that we read before we went off on this little journey? That he said, receive the Holy Spirit and they were born again. You understand that was the first people ever who have been born again by the presence of the Holy Spirit, that's going to indwell their heart and live with them like we'd see today. Mm. That was the very beginning of the new covenant. They were the first. And Nicodemus, so don't be too hard on him, he didn't understand. Yeah. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. It's clear right there. Born of the Spirit. What did Jesus tell His disciples? Peace be with you and receive the Holy Spirit. The Spirit. Yeah. Now this is like, you know, Christianity 101. But bottom line, if you're born again according to the Word of God, what happens? 
The Holy Spirit comes and dwells yes. with you and stays with you and lives with you and transforms you from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, this must happen, not should, must happen in order to see the kingdom of God. Jesus is worse. Amen? And here he gives you the reason. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. <clears throat> so according to Jesus, what he told Nicodemus, what does flesh give birth to? Flesh. flesh. What does that mean? Your sinful nature. Yeah. Your fallen nature. Mm -hmm. The nature that happened when the fall happened at the Garden of Eden. Spirit gives birth to what? The Spirit. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit comes within you. I know this is one-on-one -on -one Christianity, but I, Mike, I need to, you know, I'm not just going to blow by this and just right. pretend everybody right. understands this 100%. The very Word of God says, once the Holy Spirit comes and lives within you, it gives you a new heart, a new spirit. That's why it says born again. You're no longer dead in your sins and your transgressions. You now have a heart that lines up with the will of God. You have a transformation that happens. See, that's the huge difference between Old Covenant, New Covenant. That's why it was such a huge deal when Jesus said, Receive the Holy Spirit. All the Old Covenant, all the old people, or Old Testament saints, you've heard me say this many times, they were trying to live up to a righteous, holy, perfect God, a righteous, holy, perfect law with what? 100% of their fallen flesh and nature. Right. And Jesus says, flesh gives birth to what? Flesh. flesh. So then the question is, okay, Tony, Pastor Tony, then how did any of them get saved? The same way we do. Right. They couldn't do it. They couldn't even come close to do it. And, and God knew that, and that's why we needed a Savior. Understand the law was put in place to show us our transgressions and how much we need a Savior because we can't live up to that perfect law. Right. But through the new covenant with the new heart because of the Spirit of God that comes and lives within you, you are going to do much better because your fallen nature starts being crucified more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Amen? Just understand, we, we, we think it's like a just, I, I mean, one of the most miraculous things that happens to some of you when they get saved, it's not that they go to be in heaven with Jesus. It's that they're born again. Mm -hmm. Do you understand it's a miracle from God? And maybe it's been so long since you've been born again, you don't remember. Mm -hmm. But I remember, and it's a miracle that the God of the universe sent his son to die on a cross for my sins. Oh, no, that wasn't enough. He's going to give me the person of the Holy Spirit to come live within me and change my evil heart so I can start living more the way he wants me to live. And Jesus says, you must be born again. This is what happened to them when he said, receive the Holy Spirit. They were born again. This was huge. You under, you, do you see that he said, just as the Father has sent me, what did he say next? Now I send you. Then he said, receive the Holy Spirit. He didn't expect them to go do it with their old fallen nature. He gave them the Holy Spirit to change their hearts, to line up their will with God. And we're going to see, even more specifically, he tells them to wait, while well, I'm getting ahead of myself, till they're baptized with the Holy Spirit. You understand, baptizing with the Holy Spirit and the born-again experience are two separate things. Born-again experience is, according to the Word of God, what Jesus said, that's the born-again experience. You must be born again to be saved. Period. And we're going to look at it here in a minute. And the character of that is you start developing fruit of the Spirit in your life. Baptism of the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with salvation and everything to do with empowerment for service for God. 
That's why he not only saves them here, but he tells them, go to Jerusalem and wait for the gift I have promised. John baptizes with water. I'm just paraphrasing. But you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Because he knows the empowerment that comes with that. And that's, if you look, right after that is when they start their earthly ministry and they start doing the work of God and building the early church. And you start seeing them praying for people and healing people and people getting raised from the dead like Jesus did. Like Jesus did for people is that empowerment that comes with the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And a lot of people try to lump Pentecost all together. Well, that's when they got to say, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. Makes no sense. Because you understand, this event right here that I read to you when Jesus rose again in resurrection on the first day, come and seen his disciples, and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. They're born again. Pentecost doesn't happen until 40 days later. That's after the fact. So why would they need to be saved again? They were already saved. See what I'm saying? So what is the what is the born again experience once the Holy Spirit comes within you? I know you guys know this, but I want to read to you from Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 25. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this, what does that say? Does it say they might not inherit the kingdom of God? Or is it absolute? People get upset when you say these things. And I always say, don't get upset with me. That's the word of God. Now when it's talking about that, it's talking about living a continually ongoing lifestyle in that life. No repentance, no nothing. That is an ungenerated, unsaved heart. Or somebody who does get saved and keeps walking away and is in danger of apostasy because he's, he's ignoring the prompting of the Holy Spirit. He's starting to spit on the grace of Jesus. That is the warning. Will not. Not talking about that we blow it. And you might be thinking, Pastor, you don't understand. I blow it all the time. That's still not an ongoing, continual lifestyle in that. Right. An ongoing, continual lifestyle in that was what I was before I was saved. What I always was before I was saved. Because my eyes were blinded by the enemy. I didn't know any difference. I did not care what God wanted. All I knew is what I wanted. Right. And I lived any way that I wanted with no remorse, no conviction, no nothing. Once you get saved and the presence of the Holy Spirit comes in you, guess what happens? You guys oh. know. Yeah. Holy Spirit convicts you. You do something like that, what happens? Holy Spirit convicts you. Mm -hmm. And you cry to God and you ask for forgiveness. And what's the word of God say? <laughs> if you repent and turn to Him, He is not only faithful, but He is just mm -hmm. to forgive your sins and clean you from all unrighteousness. He is just. Some people hear the faith, but I want you to hear the just part. Why is the Father just to do that? Because he looks at the work of the cross and what his son was obedient to do. And it's always going to be just because of what Jesus did for you on the cross. Mm -hmm. As long as you have that repentive heart. That's not a repentive heart. See the difference? Right, right. So don't get hung up like, oh, mm -hmm. I can't inherit the kingdom of God if I ever, 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 ever do any of this stuff. It's not talking about falling, repenting, falling, repenting, struggling, repenting. It's talking about don't care living that lifestyle. That's what it's talking about. Okay. Yeah. Now here is what happens when a person gets born again. Mm -hmm. One of the most familiar verses in the Bible, but you know we don't we just gloss over this and don't understand the importance of it. Mm -hmm. But the fruit that compare that to what everything I read, what your fallen nature was, the list that we just read. Yeah. Now look. But the fruit of the spirit is the love, joy. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, 
gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ, here's what starts happening in a believer's life once they get born again more and more. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with His passions and desires. Amen. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, that's exactly what happens. And you guys know this? I'm just curious. Fruit of the Spirit. Now understand, it's not fruits of the Spirit. There's one Spirit. It's fruit of the Spirit. Those are different attributes of the same Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So many people, people say it's fruits of the Spirit. That's mm -hmm. not really right. Fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. The fruit of the Spirit. Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness. The whole list that I just read to you. Whose character does that line up with? Jesus. Amen. So really, when the Holy Spirit comes and lives within you, and you can see that you start developing fruit of the Spirit in your life, and it shows you the different attributes, who do you start being transformed into more and more and more? Jesus. Jesus Christ. See, that's the whole point. And people miss it. People say things like, Oh, I can't be a follower of Christ because they got all these rules and they got to live this way and they got to do this way and I can't have any fun. You'd always say, no, you don't get it. When you're born again and the Holy Spirit comes within you, it changes your heart. It starts lining up with the will of Christ and it transforms you to where you want to live like that. And when you blow it and you do some of the things on that bad list, you're convicted and you cry out and you repent and you turn to God and then we got a promise for God because of what Jesus did on the cross. He's faithful and just and will cleanse you from all unrighteousness and forgive you. Amen? Amen. See, this is how important and you're like, Pastor Doni, one verse in John and you want to talk about all that? Yes! Because he had said, and with that, he go back to verse 22 for me, Stacy. I'm sorry, get you jump back. Back to John 22. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. What have I been talking about for 15 minutes? Yes. The Holy Spirit. What happens when a person gets born again? We looked at why you have to be born again. We looked at what happens once you get born again. Amen. It's a life-altering transformation that happens in a person's life. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not here. Mm -hmm. It's here. Mm -hmm. It always starts, hear me, it always starts out here. It's got to start out here. Mm -hmm. To want to make a conscious effort to try to do this. And the more faithful you are, and the more you cry out, and the more you seek, then it goes from here to here. And you truly get born again. And then you get it. See? Then you get it. So you heard me say, this is when they're born again. Let me show you the difference compared to what happens at Pentecost in the book of Acts. Okay? Because some people will say, well, that's when the disciples were born again. No. That was in John. 40, that was on the day he, wrote, he was resurrected. After he talked to Mary, after he went to the presence of the Father all day, then he comes and sees his disciples. And later he tells them, wait. And 40 days later he ascends into heaven and they go to Jerusalem. Baptism with the Holy Spirit. It even says the word right in Scripture. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. Until the day he was taken up to heaven, what does that sound like? Until the day he was taken up to heaven. That's the ascension it's speaking of. Okay? Don't get that confused with the first day he rose to the Father and came right back. That's the ascension. And we know after the ascension he's not coming back until when? Second, Second coming. Right. Everybody's tracking. Mm -hmm. He was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions to the Holy Spirit... To the apostles he had chosen, his disciples, the ones that he just, we looked in John chapter 20, that he said, peace be with you, and breathed into him, said, Re receive the Holy Spirit. Same people. 
After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of, what's that say? 40 days. That's where we get the 40 days in the resurrection. If you ever wonder. You know, some people are like, where are you pulling this 40 out of? That's where it comes from. 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, look what he says. Now, they're already born again. We looked at that. Okay? While he was eating with them, he gave them this commandment. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be, what's that say? Baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, anybody that wants to argue with me, I, oh, that's fine, but that's what the Word of God says. That's not my opinion. That's what the Word of God says. It doesn't say born again. And Jesus obviously makes it very clear it's important to be born again because we just read that when he was talking to Nicodemus and said, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. He's talking about something different here. Baptism with the Holy Spirit. It spells it out right there. Now I want to jump ahead. We're going to look at Acts chapter 1 verses 9 through 14. So after he tells them this, after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes. What happened? It's the ascension. Mm -hmm. Right? And a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Angels. Angels. Okay. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here looking into the sky? This is so precious. I don't know if you guys have caught this. This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven, the ascension, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. When Jesus returns at the second coming, just like he ascended into the heaven on the cloud, he's going to come back the same way. And the word of God says everybody will know. Everybody will see him. And Jesus even warns, don't be fooled by false prophets and messiahs saying that Christ has come back. There will be signs when it happens. That's one of them. There's going to be no, oh, I don't know if Jesus came back. You're going to know. Then they hear, now okay, he said go to Jerusalem and wait for the gift. What was the gift? Baptism with the Holy Spirit, right? So what do they do? Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a south they walked from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to a room where they were staying. Those present, same people that he already gave the Holy Spirit to, that were already born again, those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer. So what were they doing? They're praying. They just seen their Lord and Savior ascend into heaven. You imagine that? Seeing that? Yeah. And two angels come up and said, why are you looking for him? He's going to come back the same way, the second coming. And that wasn't for their benefit, by the way. God knew that the second coming is going to be after, before they go with Him. That was for our benefit. So we'd know. Right. And then they come and wait for the gift that Jesus told them to wait for. And they're praying. They're together. They're praying. They all join together constantly in prayer along with the woman and Mary and the mother of Jesus and with His brothers. Is that the last verse I gave you, Stacey? Yes. Didn't I, don't you have Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4? Oh, sorry, yes. Okay. I'm like, if not, I messed up. <laughs> okay, so here's what happens. When the day of Pentecost came, so they're waiting. They're waiting for what Jesus told them to wait for. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand it, but they were being faithful, and they waited. 
They knew they already got born again. I'm sure they knew they were born again. Something was different. Forty days later, they'd have the Holy Spirit living within them. Okay? So they're starting to see the transformation. They're starting to feel it. Just like if you can remember back when you first got saved, the first time something really, really bad happened, and you're used to every other word coming out of your mouth being a cuss word, and no cuss word comes out, and you go, huh. why did that happen? <laughs> but at first you think it's a coincidence and it keeps happening over and over and over and over and over and like, wow that's born again Amen. so they knew something was up when the day of Pentecost came they were all together in one place suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. That's another way to say baptized with the Holy Spirit. Anytime you see filled or infilled to the fullest, or that, it's referring to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Here's the problem. So many people Get hung up on speaking in tongues. Yeah. It's not about speaking in tongues. God has blessed me and I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I am nothing special. I desired more God in my life and He was a, His grace and love and mercy. He did it for me. The only reason that a person speaks in tongues is the initial evidence to let that person know that it happened in their life. It's not like the end all is speaking in tongues. You know what the end all is? It's so you could do this kind of stuff better. That I couldn't do near this well. And you might be going, well, you ain't doing it that great now. I don't know. But the point is, once you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you understand Scripture like you never did before. Once you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you're bold when you preach and you talk and you, and you share your faith. Once you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you're empowered in different ways that you never were before. That's the whole point of it. God baptized people with the Holy Spirit to empower them to do things for His church. To witness, to preach, to teach, to serve, to do all these things. And what were the disciples getting ready to do? Build the church. Build the church. Mm. And the Lord's like, mm -hmm. Tony Lane version, you need to be turbo judge. You need to remember everything Jesus said to you. Yeah. You need to have that empowerment, that enabling power with the Holy Spirit. Do you guys recall this? When you look in the Gospels, because some people don't think about this. When you look in the Gospels, Jesus Christ Himself, our Lord and Savior, when He was on His earthly ministry. Okay? When did He start His earthly ministry? Not until after He was baptized by John the Baptist. Amen? Mm -hmm. Why? Because He had to have the Holy Spirit. He waited to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To use the enabling power of the Holy Spirit to do His yeah. earthly ministry. If, that was, if it was that important for our Lord and Savior, how important do you think it is for His children to be baptized with the Holy Spirit? To be the best servants they can to do things for Him. See, a lot of people don't want to be baptized. And I'm not saying that. I'm not trying to push this on anybody. I'm just trying to help you understand the difference between the two. Some people don't get baptized in the Holy Spirit because they don't believe in it. Other type of people don't want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because they don't want to get involved and do it anymore. And other people get baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's what happens, like me. And they didn't have a clue. Just because I desired more. And I struggled with sin in my life. And I'd read the Gospels. And I'd read the men of God. And I'm like, Lord, something's wrong. Something's wrong. I don't feel like these men. I don't live like these men. I don't know what's going on, Lord Jesus. I, and I would read and I would pray. And I'd read when I'd pray. And I went to bed that night. And I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you know, then I very clearly remember the Lord telling me, what's your excuse now? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. time to get off the fence. <clears throat> it's time to get busy about my business. It's time to be sold out. It's time to live the life that I've called you to live. Do it. 
You wanted proof. You wanted empowerment. You wanted emboldenment. You wanted me to help you do all these things more. Here it is. Let's see what you do. And it's never been the same. Ever. No, it's not about me. It's about God. And believe it or not, it's a promise for all. But just understand, what happened at Pentecost was not born again. They were already born. That was something special. It very clearly said a few verses back, baptized with the Holy Spirit. It didn't say born again. So I was going to just mention uh, how we categorize those things or, or classify those those gifts, right? So fruit of the Spirit and gifts of the Spirit, right? So gifts generally refer to the baptism piece. Always. Right? And that has to do with things like speaking in tongues, being able to interpret tongues, having... Uh, Discernment. discernment and we all have discernment, but it's a special kind of discernment. Gift of faith, get the healing, all the all the gifts. Gifts of the those are gifts, plural, of the spirit. Right. And some people get upset when you say this, but doctrinally and theologically correct, if you really look at it, gifts of the spirit are operated through people who have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. They're not the people's gifts. They're the Holy Spirit's gifts. But they've been baptized with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit chooses of the people that have been baptized with the Holy Spirit who and when and how and what gift they're going to operate through that person. Mm -hmm. Fruit of the Spirit is with every believer that gets saved. Yes. Every believer. And there is a few incidents where somebody will get saved and get baptized with the Holy Spirit on one shot. I look back and I know why God didn't do it with me at first. I had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of junk to get out of me. Amen. And, and, and God's not going to fill you to the brim with the Holy Spirit when you still got all that junk in you and He's got to get out. You know what He's going to do first? You're going to get born again. Holy Spirit's going to come in, going to develop the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Peace, patience, kindness, all those things that starts doing what? Driving this sin out, that sin out, this sin out. That's an out. It's an out. See? So, it, but it's just, it's an amazing miracle that can happen yeah. in anyone's life. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe all of you already knew this. But maybe some of you are like, well, man, you know, when I read about Pentecost, that's when they got saved. No. Mm. Two different things. Do you guys see that? Does that, is that clear? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how else you can interpret that other than the way I just taught it. So that's why I wanted to go through all these verses. To go through one verse, and guess what? It's 8.05. <laughs> and we made it through two verses in John. Two. And I had 12 to go through, and we made it through two. When do, how, how, far away, how far away is Christmas? <laughs> we might get to John by Christmas. I might get to two chapters by Christmas. Yeah. But see, I can't help it. This is the way I teach. I, I teach to where I'm not going to leave any stone unturned. I want to make sure there's no questions. I don't want anybody to walk out of here like I used to when I went to Bible studies or I sat in, the, in a pew and I listened to a pastor preach and I heard born again, baptized with the Holy Spirit, receiving the Holy Ghost, all these things that being so confused. You know, I'm like, am I saved or not? How do you tell? You know, and I was so confused and sometimes just broken hearted. Because I'd read about this stuff and I'd hear a preacher preach about it. I'm like, oh my word, I don't think I'm even saved. <laughs> you know, that's not good. Right. But see, if you're confused and you don't understand, you can have salvation without the baptism. Or you can have both. It all comes from God. Same God. You know the scripture where, where God promises even your father on earth, I'm just going to par paraphrase, even your father on earth knows things that you need and good gifts. He said, how much more does your father in heaven know what you need? He wouldn't give you a scorpion. He wouldn't give you a stone. You know what that's in context of? Baptism with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what it's talking about. This in the book of Acts. It's talking about that. That if, if somebody desires it, if you're ready, God's going to do it in your life. 
Amen? Amen. Is there any questions? Comments? Two verses? <laughs> a lot of verses. A lot of verses. Just two verses in John. I don't care if you do two verses or 20. <laughs> the way you teach, it stays with you. Yes. Okay. You know, I mean, it's just... So nice. Again, yes. I just I just want to I mean, make I sure. I understand it all, but I know I've heard it. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I, I wouldn't feel really bad if, if I walked out of here and a week later somebody goes, so, at Pentecost, is that when they got saved? And I'd be like, oh, I should have covered that. <laughs> you know, you should say to them, oh, they ought to be my Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> it's a YouTube video, get on there. Yeah. So if there's any, no more comments, any more comments, questions? Lord willing, I think we can finish up the chapter next week. I only have one other verse that's going to take us on a couple of other verses, but most of it's straightforward. And I'm just going to give you a heads up. This is a little early, but uh, my wife is having surgery on the 11th. And that's what day's week? Monday. Monday. So that Wednesday, I'm not going to be here. Bruce, Bruce is going to teach. Yay. I just don't feel like I should leave her by herself. Yeah. Yeah. Three. Yep, I just don't feel like I should leave her by herself that quick. So, All right, no more questions or comments. I'm going to go ahead and pray and let you guys leave. Okay. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And Lord, I just thank you that you make it abundantly clear in your word all the special promises and yes. just the gift you give us and, and then the fruit and all the things just because you love us, Lord. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you inspired the Bible to be written in such a way, Lord, that we can dive into it and look at it and understand it. And I thank you for that. I give you the praise and the thanks for everything good in our life, Lord. Lord, I just pray for protection for each individual here, Lord. And I know there's lots of people that need prayer, Lord. I think of, I think of my wife. I think of, I think of. There's so many, Lord. I, I, knee surgeries and. COVID issues and back issues and uh, Elaine's got something going on with her back right now, Lord, where she's got a cyst. And Lord, I just want to lift all these up to you, Lord. I just take away fear, take away anxiety. And we thank you for that. Yes. I pray for protection and leading and guiding. In the name of both all names I pray. Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.